So you're with Zelda Universe? Yes, indeed. Cool, awesome. Yeah, so I remember the last time we talked, I was asking you for an extended tour in Europe. Yeah, you got and, it. And, and now we got it. So <laughs> now, I actually want to ask, is this, is this a response from fan feedback? Or, or why did you decide to, to take it? So much further this time. Uh, it was just uh, it was what I always wanted to do. It just was a matter of timing. I see. Yeah. So yeah. So it was just it's just really a matter of time, and, and I put together a good network of people in Europe. So now we can we can we're going to be coming back again uh, in the fall. Oh, uh, excellent. November as well, and then also in 2016 we're going to do an even more expansive tour. Um, I see. Not, that might actually be news. We'll come back here, and then we'll also be coming back to. Uh, we'll be coming to um, Denmark, uh, as well as Norway, and oh, also very Finland. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. So Northern yeah. Europe's definitely going to get their dose of uh, Zelda in 2016. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, we know we know some people who have told us that you know they're flying in here from, I know, from Finland, and Norway. I know. But even you know last time people were flying into London just to see this. It's very popular. Yeah. Have you noticed any differences between like the various countries you've been to, as far as the audience or fans? Not really, you know, I, they're all, a lot of the people um, that come to our shows are obviously Zelda fans. Um, the venues that we have are typically in, you know, uh, not your, your traditional concert halls like in Europe. Um, so they're bigger venues, mm. so um, we get a lot more really hardcore Zelda fans. A lot of times when we do it in smaller venues, like concert halls, you get a lot of like your typical symphony goers. Right. And so, um, but when you do a show like this in, in this type of venue, you get your hardcore Zelda fans, um, the yeah. people who really know Zelda. Yeah. They I mean, seek it out, you know. Oh, definitely. Yeah. We've been getting a lot of street passes. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. That's, just, that's always the, the fun part about coming to these shows. I used to, I used to bring my 3DS quite a bit. and. Uh, my daughter seems to have monopolized my uh, 3DS these days. So oh, I see. It's always in a room, and I don't want to wake her when I leave usually. So <laughs> I'm like, oh man, but I really want to get street passes. So, um, but yeah, no, the plights of being a father. What's that? The plights of being a father. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all right. She's hooked. I can't. I, I'd rather be playing video games and, and doing something else, you know. So uh, yeah. it's, it's not a bad, not a bad thing. So I want to ask for for those who have been. To the the first round we made with the the first season and the the second quest, and now you're doing master quest. What is the biggest thing you've changed since the one year hiatus? Sure, um, you know what we did is obviously we uh, we updated a lot of the video. Um, we we re 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 edited a lot of the video, especially for the movements, the four movement symphony. Yeah. Um, and then of course we've added new songs, so we, we've added uh, a piece from A Link Between Worlds. Um, we've also added more music from Majora's Mask, um, obviously with the remake um, yeah. and uh, the re-release in 3D. Um, we've actually been able to update all the video and that, so that's been awesome. Um, so, so yeah, and uh, we've also been able to bring back some of the uh, music that we did in the 25th anniversary concerts. Oh, um, yes. So, um, whereas before we didn't use, uh, we, we only did the 25th anniversary music at the 25th anniversary concert. Right, like there were two separate events exactly. entirely, pretty much. Exactly, so um, that's been really cool. Like, for example, the boss battle medley, um, mm. which I love. Um, yeah. And that, that was, was something we brought back, and I really, that, I love it. <coughs> I, I, I wanted it, so I added it. And, so, yeah. Yeah, I think that was my favorite too when I went to the 25th anniversary, especially the, the Ganon final battle from Ocarina of Time. That one was really... The thing was, I had bad luck because I was sitting so close to the speakers that the floor started vibrating on some of the tunes. <laughs> so I mean, the different venues too has to be a, a bit of an extra challenge. Because yeah. you just go from location to location. Like you were in London just yesterday. No, right? tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow. you go to London tomorrow. Yeah. Right. This is it's the just... first stop in our European tours this round. So we made stop on our first destination. Yeah, so. All right. So I guess we'll, we're in for a treat then. Yeah, uh, absolutely, definitely. Um, you know, this is a brand new show. Um, uh, one of the things that is very unique about this show that's different too is um, uh, outside of me speaking in the beginning of the show and introducing um, the conductor and the orchestra and the choir, we have uh, we have introductions being done by Mr. Miyamoto, um, oh, wow. Mr. Aonuma, and mm -hmm. also Mr. Kondo. So 
um, kind of the, the creative of the show has, has kind of gone away from the people who weren't a part of the game. Right. Like, for example, Jeremy Moore and, and some of those people that were, you know, taking the stage. Um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't really want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we just kind of fell into that and I always wanted to have the creators themselves actually speaking to the audience because for me that's the most important thing. Right. It's not about anyone else, it's actually, it's about those three. It's, yeah, it's about the game. Yeah. And that's also something that you had with the 25th anniversary. I remember in London, Mr. Anuma was there yeah. and the Mr. Kondo also. Yeah. So, and, and that was really amazing. Yeah. And I think especially when Mr. Kondo took the stage to, to play the piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I, I wish that would have happened because I have a, the Majora's Mask uh, arrangement that we've done. I wrote it with that intention in mind. So the right. piano is a very slow kind of... I'm imagining Song of Healing. Uh, so, so that intro is... Uh, good, good job. Uh, <laughs> the, the, um, the, uh, that intro was written especially for him to perform and I was hoping we would get the opportunity when I did the, the three, uh, Majora's Mask 3D launch in uh, Tokyo. Right. But he didn't have enough time to practice, so right. he's so busy, you know, so, but, um, yeah. You can only get so much, oh, I, I know. guess. It's... I get enough. I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at with this, this uh, so I'm not too worried. Right. Yeah, I mean, th that's how we feel, too. It's, it, it, regardless of the season or the location, it, it's always been an amazing experience. And, and any such things as bonus appearances, like, they are, they're just icing on the cake, really. Absolutely. So. I would like to ask you just a bit about uh, what you thought personally about, well, let's say for instance Madras Mask, the most recent remake. Yeah. Like how, how did you like it? How do I like the game? Yeah. Um, well, I love it. Um, I'm a big fan of Majora's Mask, so for me it was a long time coming. It was something that, you know, obviously I wasn't active in saying, right. come on, but everyone else was doing it for us. So, you know, I was just kind of, I was wondering if it would happen. Mm -hmm. um, but when it did happen, I was I was really excited because it means a lot of things for the game, right? Um, a lot of things for the franchise, and it also means that this is probably going to be something that other we'll probably see with other remakes taking place, right? Possibly. Yeah, and so I think that's encouraging. And I also was fortunate enough to talk to Aonuma san, um, and just to hear his enthusiasm and also his excitement about you know, what he did differently and what he's doing yeah. with the game, that was really encouraging to me and it just, it just, we, I just feel confident in knowing that the Zelda franchise is in good hands, you know? Oh, um, definitely. You know, it's, it's getting better. Yeah. You know, and it's... Yeah, I think A Link Between Worlds, most of all, show that. Yeah, I agree. A Link Between Worlds is awesome. I have a really nice arrangement, in fact, of A Link Between Worlds for this concert. Yeah, um, yeah, so, I, I've heard. And, and... So I played, I kind of, I actually brought on Chris Tilton who uh, is a pretty pretty good uh, arranger and, and um, he used to work with Michael Giacchino and did a lot of uh, Fringe and a lot of other projects, uh, Ratatouille. And oh, that's really interesting. Anyway, so the idea and the credit behind that was to have, to kind of combine the low roll and the high roll themes in creating this one arrangement that I think turned out beautifully. And what I had imagined it being plays down better than what I had imagined it being. So it's, it's always a Oh yeah, I mean, I. I can only imagine that, that that must be so satisfying to hear the final result and be like, well, oh, yeah. this is actually much better. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, a MIDI, a MIDI uh, is, 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 it can only, you know, it's kind of like uh, whenever you're a creative type or a mm -hmm. creative person, what you, what you actually, you know, what you realize or what you imagine and what you realize and then what you actualize is, mm -hmm. is a big deal, you know, because, right. so that one turned out kind of perfectly what I imagined, but I was I was pessimistic that it was going to be so good and it played down beautifully. So it was exciting to hear at the first rehearsal in, in Nashville because it was the first time I had heard it perform. Mm. Um, yeah, so it was really cool. All right. I, I want to go back for a second to Miro's Mask because yeah, a lot of, like you said, a lot of Sella fans are pretty hardcore and, and we love to theorize and speculate about things. Oh yeah, I know. And, and one of the things about Miro's Mask is that it was constantly teased the years leading up to it. Mm -hmm. Like in A Link Between Worlds, you had a little Majora's Mask on the on the wall of Link's house. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in the in the very first round of the Symphony of the Goddesses, there was no Majora's Mask piece. Mm -hmm. But then in the second quest, there was one. Mm -hmm. So it kind of seemed 
like slowly but steadily, Nintendo started putting in little Majora's Mask uh, references and cameos everywhere to sort of hype up. I don't think that, I don't really, that wasn't really intentional. I'll just be honest with you. Um, that wasn't intentional. It just kind of happened that way. I think the first season was just you know we we just didn't add it, but it wasn't because we didn't want to. I think. So, yeah. So you're saying my dress mask is not good enough? No, I'm not <laughs> saying that. What I'm saying is I think we were really focused on the content that we were currently doing, mm -hmm. and we knew that you know we had other installments. Yeah. And so it makes sense to kind of add it in the second quest. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, and also, you know, you know, you know, you're probably considered a Zelda expert. You know, and um, there's a lot of people that kind of love and hate Majora's Mask. There's some oh. people that hate Majora's Mask, but well, there's a lot of people that hate Ocarina of Time too. And, yeah. and which seems, I mean, there, but would, I think you would. I think you might want to argue that that Majora's Mask is one of those games that you either love or hate. From I don't think hate's the right word. I think right. Yeah. You either like or dislike. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to a great show tonight.